and even if they all tank tomorrow, what I'm going to show you here is going to be relevant for the next time they take off. So I just uh, snuck in the sardine story, and that's because we're going to talk about IPOs this week. And uh, John is our resident IPO expert in a Facebook group. John Ross, he's really taken the ball and ran with it. I hope I got the tense right on that when it comes to IPOs. He does a really good job with them, so I'm, I'm proud of him, proud to have him in the group. And we've been really active talking about IPOs lately, and, and quite a few of them taken off. But then it's like all of a sudden it's like the, they hit the brakes a little bit. So I, I put together the slide a few days ago, and I'm like, IPOs are heating up again. It's like, eh, or were heating up? But I think this they're going to ebb and flow like everything else. And I think it's important because I debated half the day of whether or not to talk about IPOs tonight. But I, I think it's important, even if they all tank tomorrow, what I'm going to show you here is going to be relevant for the next time they take off. Anyway, this is one I did not take. Like I said, I like to take every chart or trade I show you. I did not take this one. I think some people in the group took it. John, do you take this one? So buy it, be super simple pattern. I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of IPOs that are lower priced like this. Usually $5 is kind of my cutoff. And this one's kind of like, it's right at $5 and change when it triggered. And I decided to pass on it. But it did take off. Now, buy it be again, you need five days and you're buying at the close of the fifth day or or any subsequent day where it closes at a new closing high. So you can see here's the close, 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 and then closes here, day five, and it also closes there. Okay, John didn't take WC2. Is there a reason you didn't take it? Was it because it was cheap? Just curious. Now, here's one that the guys in a group have been talking about day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five. So the new closing high was set on day four. So any close above that would be a buy, and that would have been the buy there. Now, the reason I didn't take this trade is one thing I like to ask myself is what's the story, fad or glory? John said it was for price. Well, you know what? You should you should be proud of yourself. I should be proud of myself too for not taking it because in general, those lower price ones tend to be a lot more speculative and, and don't seem to work as well. And, and that's the thing with trading is making a decision and then living with it. It's like, of course, I'd like to be in that stock right now up 200% or whatever the case may be, but it didn't quite fit because of the because of the price. But anyway, in this case, the range is kind of so-so on this one. It's okay. I like to see a decent range with the buy at B, and I'll show you an example of that in just one second of a narrow range. But also, I like to ask myself, what's the story, fad, or glory? Now, I know, hey, Dave, you're confusing the issue with facts. I know, I know, I know. I'm confusing the issue with facts a little bit. But with IPOs, you for these pioneer setups, the setups that could trigger on day five, and trigger early in the life cycle of the IPO, you want some kind of excitement about them. Maybe like a micro nuclear reactor where they have these nuclear reactors, they drive around on trucks and can power like half a city or whatever. I don't know if that's an exaggeration, but it's pretty impressive stuff. I don't know how viable it is, but I know that that's going to be a pretty big deal with all the AI and all the crypto mining and all this other stuff out there, these power demands these energy demands that we have nowadays. So that's exciting, or a biotechnology, or, or some kind of, I don't know, electric vehicles, just some sort of excitement as opposed to a kinder care learning company? I mean, what is that, you know? So I like to ask myself that for the pioneer setups. Now, I will take secondary setups, as I'll show you in just one second. By the way, somebody's asked me before, of like is there any areas that you've never really made money on and i've done a lot of trend testing mechanical testing over the years and two sectors that i find don't really trend that well is shipping and education now shipping can have some really big moves at times so as a trader yeah you can go in and make some money in shipping education i just eh, have a hard time getting excited about it. those stocks tend to be tend to be really choppy so it was hard for me to get excited about this one. Now, I might take a secondary setup. Now, by secondary setup, 
I remember when Academy came public. Now, the range wasn't fantastic. It was pretty narrow range, so I probably wouldn't have taken the trade based on that. But it did expand shortly thereafter. But it was like hard for me to get excited about this stock. What's the story, fad of glory? It's a brick and mortar retailer, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but there was a secondary setup, and I'm like, you know what? As a as a purist, as a technical analysis price purist, and if the pattern is there, and it had all the makings of a decent pattern, it had acceleration of trend, it had a decent move higher, and then it pulls back fairly deeply. You like to trade deeper pullbacks than the IPOs. The first deep retracement is the way to go. So this was recommended in service. And if you go back to whatever year this was, uh, I guess 2020, you could see when I recommended that trade back in November of 2020. So you can check that out. And it turns out, not that you want to confuse the issue with facts, but it turns out that people were sick of being stuck inside because of this COVID thing. And they went out and bought kayaks and outdoor gears and went out and did things. So that's what's happening. Today. Hey, we've got to check in for Brazil. That's awesome. Is Estonia in the house? We have, uh, we're going to talk to um, Maze in a minute. I hope, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, but we'll talk to talk uh, to Maze about uh, stop placement. So that would be Estonia. we got Brazil. That's exciting. And sometimes we have Australia checking in. Anyway, so that was the buy right there on that first deep retracement. Now here's one I'm long, and it, it's so funny when I came, when I, well, like Tuesday, I was thinking, okay, this week, I'm gonna show them all the IPOs that I'm long, and it really hadn't materialized just yet, but I'm gonna show them now, and when they take off, I'm gonna say, you see, I told you. <laughs> but <laughs> remember Monty Python? It's just a little rap, I told you. Bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and then bar five. Now, the buy at B would be right any close above this bar, but the problem was the range was compressed. So in other words, it didn't have a, a big range. You wanna see enough range to where you're buying that new high, you know that there's some excitement there to possibly push that stock even higher what did we talk about last week greater fool hunting okay if you have the range there there's a chance that there could be some greater fools in the wings okay so again new closing high was here so any close above that technically would be a buy but i didn't like the range but what was kind of cool is when i was looking at it doing my analysis late in the day i'm like well you know what this thing has an expansion of range and I, I'm trying to think if it was this one or not. I'd be happy to confirm for you. But I think I might have even bought this one in after hours because it was a setup and there was an expansion of range. Yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure because it was a Friday afternoon. Anyway, it has not worked yet. So let's just see what happened. So again, the original buy would have been any close above that. If it had closed modestly above that, let's say 24 or even 24.50 or so. I probably would have left it alone, but it had an expansion of range. And that's something that I didn't think about when I originally did the IPO course, what happens when you have a expansion of range on a trigger. So that's one that you might not have thought about buying until you actually see the trigger on, on the, the signal. So here's another one I'm long, bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. And bar five. Now, the new closing high is right here, but we have the day one rule, which means that it must close at a new closing high and above the first bar of trading if that bar sets the high for the week. So if this is the high for the week and then these bars are lower, okay, then it has to close above the day one high now if any bar takes out that day one high that rule is no longer in effect and we've got plenty of videos on this so just uh, check the youtube channel and check my website okay this one was kind of a little funky but i went with it anyway 
and I'm not too happy that I did, but we'll get to that. Bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and bar five. Once again, here we have a case where the high for the first week was set on day one. So what happens when that happens? You have to close above that day one high. Again, new closing high was, was right there, but because the high was set on day one, you also have to close above the day one high. So I bought it. And so you believe me that I actually bought it. Look, there's a thousand, <clears throat> there's a thousand shares right there. See, I'm doing what I say I do. <laughs> and this is what happened today. Not that I care about news, but I couldn't find any news on it. So I find that interesting that it lost like 80% of its value with no news. And of course I said, mother father. Well, I just showed you that uh, shit happens, huh? 